are you far behind? Because I am. I'm actually not too far behind. I'm about a week behind. I have a little bit over 20,000 words right now. A little bit over. And I've only written part of my words for today, but I have to leave in just a little while to go to my mom's out of town. I'm going to be gone for a little bit this afternoon, so I'm not going to be able to get some of the things done that I want to get done today, but it's really important that I do this stuff with my mom. And if you look, oh yeah, there were three days when I didn't write at all. There was a day when I wrote 175 words. There was a day when I wrote 524 words. And then there were two days when I wrote quite a bit. One day I wrote 2,957 words. And then the next day I wrote 3,412 words. And as of this morning, I have right at almost 1,800 words written. So if I write this evening, I will be able to get quite a bit done. Right now, if I don't write any more words today, it's looking like I won't finish the 50,000 words until December the 8th. This handy dandy timer though is gonna make a really big difference because I set the timer and do my own word sprints. And that's one of the really good ways that I have found to kind of get caught up, to get back in the writing mood, uh, the writing mindset when I have a lot of things going on and things like that. And what I usually do is I have my notebook and I'll do a word sprint. And then if I have to come back to it later, I'll write a couple of sentences down about where I was headed with my writing so that when I get back to it, I can go, okay, this is where I was going. You know, I've got, I've got a basic outline, but I don't outline by scene. I outline by chapter. So when I'm in a scene, I kind of have a, an idea in my head of where I want to go with that scene. And it really helps if I know when I stop writing, where I'm going to go next, if I write it down. So that's one of the ways, one of the other ways, don't worry, we can get caught up. There's, there's no reason why for those of us who are behind like I am which is about a week behind like I said um, that we can't get caught up another thing well I don't know why I put that back another thing that I found to be inspirational to help keep me on track is I wrote two pages worth of writer quotes uh, to help me get in the mood to write Vladimir Nabokov has a quote that I absolutely love and I thought I'd share it with you the pages are still blank, but there is a miraculous feeling of the words being there written in invis invisible ink and clamoring to become visible. I love, love, love that quote. So what I wanted to do right now is give you a few tips about how to get caught up if, like me, you're behind. Word sprints works really well. There are some people doing live write-ins on YouTube. I think Tamara might be doing one tonight. I need to check because if I'm back in time, I will be doing a write-in with Tamara. I have thought about doing a write-in on my own YouTube channel, but until recently, my internet was too wonky to do it. We have since increased the speed of our internet and hopefully, even with the rain, I might be able to do that sometime soon. But what I also have found helpful, other than doing write-ins, whether they're on YouTube or in person some of you have the municipal liaisons and you have uh, can go to write up meetups write in meetups <laughs> that was a tongue twister you can go to meetups and write with other people sometimes it's helpful to go to the library or a coffee shop or Panera or somewhere like that and have a writing day for me usually my writing day consists of a timer quite a bit of coffee in between some glasses of water or a smoothie. I have fallen in love with lately the green smoothies. Um, I think it's Boathouse or someone makes them. It's green apple and I want to say spinach and all kinds of delicious goodness. But I have fallen in love with those lately. So I've been having one of those for breakfast and then sometimes in the evening for dessert. Um, they also have a berry one that I really like. Um, I can make them myself, but I haven't really had the time lately. <laughs> And my husband broke the little small bullet that he got me that I could make my smoothies in. So now if I make them, I have to make them in the blender. And it doesn't work as well. So I've been buying the ones by Boathouse. I think that's the name of the brand. But anyway, to make a long story short, <laughs> because I'll get rambly, because I'm excited. Um, I've got a lot of things to do, but I have also, but I've also got a lot of writing to do. And I'm getting things done. Yesterday was an awful day for me. We've had so much rain lately. I was in a really bad pain. So I did get some things done. And then I lounged on the couch. Um, I got some writing done. 
and then I took a really long nap. And then I woke up and I got some more things done and then I went back to bed and went to sleep and got up early this morning. I am getting things done in spurts even when I have bad days. Um, like I said, there were three days when I didn't write. Most of that was family stuff. And one day when I didn't write quite 200 words, that was a disappointing day. But I did get words written. And I find that if I don't beat myself up over my word count and I just move forward, that helps. Not editing helps. You want all the words. You know, you want all the words. I do use parentheses and I will write down things that I know I want to go back to and edit if I have an idea about something I want to edit. If I don't know the name of something, I'll put he or she or him or her and I'll put a bracket, parentheses or bracket, and I'll put need name of character, blah, blah, blah. So that when I go back in and I am editing, it will make the process a lot easier. If I'm not sure about a scene, then when I'm writing it, when I'm done with that scene, I'll do the same thing. Parentheses, brackets, I'll write down, hey, I don't know if I like this scene. I'm thinking maybe I need to change it to something else, blah, 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 blah. And I keep going. That's one of the other helpful things I've found. Uh, because my notes to myself inside of the pages helps. And one of the things I try really hard to remember, like Hemingway said, the first draft of anything is shit. And I'm not going to beat myself up over the first draft. I need to get to a point where I've finished it and I've written the end and then I have something to actually edit so that I can make it better. And maybe I'll need to edit it two or three times. All I know is that I've got to get to the end before I can even send it to beta readers. Uh, it's never going to get published if I don't finish writing it. And NaNoWriMo is a really great way to stay motivated and to get back into the habit of writing on a regular basis. I would love to be able to say that I've written words every single day this month, but I've not. Uh, although there's a part of me that, like I said, does kind of want to beat myself up over that. I'm not doing that because I am back in the habit of writing on a regular basis. And if there's a day or two here or there where I'm not able to write, then at least my mind is in my novel and I am thinking about my novel and that is helpful. I have considered taking my notebook along with me wherever I go, like today, taking my notebook and my pen with me, and then jotting down ideas while I'm out and about. If I hear snippets of conversation, or if I see something that makes me think, oh, that would be a really good setting in my novel for a scene. I can write those things down, and then when I get home, I can add them into, I can add them into said novel. One of the things I'm going to be filming this evening, and I'm gonna to try to get it up tomorrow, on the second channel on the journey with Burgess YouTube channel is I have the writer's block tarot and I am going to do a spread for my novel so hopefully I will be able to get it done this evening um, and get some work done on it and then do the video and have it up tomorrow or at the latest Saturday so you can check that out the link for the second channel is below if you haven't already it is more spiritual in nature, I do um, other things <laughs> on that channel. The writing with tarot, that's on that channel. If you're interested, recently in one of my coffee chats for Patreon, I did a video about finding your creative truth. And in that video, I quoted Lewis Carroll from Alice in Wonderland. And I'm gonna share that with you before I end this, because I think this is kind of important for writing too. It's important for us to know where we're headed. Even when I was pantsing, I had a good idea of where I wanted to go with the character, with the novel. It was sometimes the getting the middle part. Like, I knew my beginning and my end. But I didn't always know, like, the middle. And now I've learned since then. So even if I were to pants a novel now, I would know more about my beginning, middle, and end. So anyway, anyway, <laughs> because I'm going to get distracted again. And that's not going to be good. Lewis Carroll. Cheshire Cat asked Alice, Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to go, said the cat. I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter where you go, said the cat. And I think that's where I was at before when I was writing, trying to write my novel, this witchy business novel. I had a pretty good idea, but a lot of what I was doing was prompted by one main idea. 
and I didn't know exactly where to go in certain areas with that idea to make that happen. Once I started down the path of using the hero's journey and I really got into character development with the character arc and the hero's journey, it started to make a lot more sense because your characters have to go through conflict externally and internally to get to where they need to be at the end of the novel. One of my big issues lately has been killing off my darlings. There are some darlings in my novel that need to be killed off. So I have been watching a few documentaries lately on Netflix and on Hulu and other places, Amazon Prime, about secret societies, <laughs> forensics, and serial killers to kind of get an idea of what I need to do and where I want to go with that. And I keep thinking every time I do this, every time I go on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or I go on Google and I research some of this, what somebody would think about my history, you know? I, I'm a writer, what can I say? So that's one of the other things I suggest. Sometimes if, you feel in, if you're feeling like a little bit blocked and you don't know where to go next, Get some inspiration from somewhere else, something that has to do with your novel or your or one of the characters or one of the settings. Um, I don't suggest doing too much of that. Um, don't binge watch, uh, but you can watch a few here or there or read a few books here or there, read some stuff. I have a true crime book that I actually have gone to for inspiration um, quite a few times. That's helpful. There are a lot of different things that you can do, but if you are behind with NaNoWriMo, don't worry, you're not alone. You are not alone. Normally, I'm way more ahead. Normally, I have a, a bit much bigger word count at this point, but it's okay because this year, I'm writing, really writing. Last year was a really rough NaNoWriMo, and um, I was just writing to write. To Yeah, but this year, I'm actually working on the novel at the way that I need to and if it's a little bit slower then hey that's okay slow and steady wins the race too you know bye y'all thanks for watching I'll see you again soon